everybody. Hello, great to be here. Hi, Blanca. Hello. Well, this is Silvia Camerini. Hello from PregnancySqueen.com. Um, my aim is to, is to support pregnant women to uh, realize their best birthing experience. And uh, I support them to reconnect to their inner wisdom and birthing abilities so they can um, accomplish the birthing goals and they emerge fulfilled through their childbirth. And at the beginning of this year, I had this idea to deliver to my pregnant women um, an effective tool to inspire inspire them. And I was thinking about the last five years of my life, um, during which I attended a lot of mother circles. And I had uh, the pleasure to listen to the birth stories tales. So I thought about this series, Tell Your Beautiful Birth Story. And today I'm here with a friend of mine, uh, who is a mentor as well for highly educated uh, women. She helps them to find their unique path in life. And she's a great woman. <laughs> um, she's Blanca Vergara and she had a beautiful birth story. So she agreed with me to, to share it with us all. And I'm so delighted that she's here with me today and that she is um, sharing her not only her birth story but a part of her life as well. So welcome Blanca and thank you so much for being here with me and with us all. Thank you, I'm delighted to be here. Well Blanca, I'd love to start from your birth story. Uh, but before to do it, I want to acknowledge the fact that you are here today and that you are sharing an intimate part of your life because giving birth, it is something really intimate. So I want to thank you very much because I think this is really important for other women to get inspired, to get inspiration, to listen to another woman. But what we need is the courage and the will from that woman to share her story. So thank you for this, Blanca. Uh, uh, this, uh, could you say, it really touches me because um, it is really intimate. It is really intimate. You are uh, not only naked in body, but you are naked in soul and spirit. You are at your most fragile and are you most fa most powerful. So uh, it is kind of sanctioned to talk about uh, uh, birth experiences. Nobody tells you how it was, and uh, we all say that we forgot about it. Uh, but we, we just don't talk about it, uh, if not to scare other women, uh, if not to uh, say how wonderful it was and it was not scary and it was actually expansive and great. We also don't talk about it because he's kind of a, not allowed to be happy in birth uh, because everybody else is suffering. So that, that's why it's so wonderful that you are doing this series because uh, you are showing women that uh, uh, it can be beautiful. Yes, this was and this is my aim. I want to show women, especially pregnant women, especially for who is pregnant now and has an upcoming childbirth, that birth can be pleasurable, can be a fulfilling process, it can be an empowering process. And maybe simply listening to your body and to really act and react according to what you feel the most um, right thing for you in that very moment you are giving birth is the important thing. So I'd like to spread the message amongst women that um, 
birthing can be pleasurable and it can be the chance for you to really connect to your inner power and feel strong and in control of your life. What do you think, Blanca? Indeed, well, it, uh, this, this has been my experience. <laughs> this has definitely been my experience. And well, if you want me to start, then I'm. <laughs> because, um, I don't know, I yes. guess the story will tell all these feelings. I will be delighted to listen to your story. So if you're ready, simply start as you feel to start. And if you need to take, you know, a, a pose or whatever, you, you're welcome to do it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to start uh, uh, from almost the beginning. <laughs> I was 38 years old and I was childless. I uh, didn't have a boyfriend and I was working myself to death. <laughs> In that environment, uh, I got my period about uh, twice a year. So my prospects to be a mother were really bleak. 38 years old, no boyfriend and no children and my body was a disaster. Uh, and I said I really want to be a mother and I prayed and I asked I ask God to help me. And, and she did. And she did, and now I'm 45 in, a, uh, what is, in one week from now is my birthday. And I can tell you that I have two healthy, beautiful children and a wonderful husband. And uh, somehow this is perfect celebration of that that happened. And uh, I, I agree with uh, Sylvia that I was going to tell you more about the, the second birth, but I cannot tell you about the second birth without the story of that conducted to it. So in that environment of being 38 years old and not having a partner, uh, I let go of everything and I said, God, uh, bring me to the path. So I let go of that job and I started working in myself, eating better and uh, being healthier, being nicer to myself, doing the work that really fulfills me, really connected to my soul, to my life. And it was like this that I met the most wonderful man for me. And uh, uh, the relationship was so good that we became really good friends. And very soon we said we wanted to have children. And like this, we became pregnant. But I had in my mind that I needed to run my business, you know, the business of my sole purpose of uh, empowering women. And I had that thought in my mind that I didn't have time to have children. I didn't have time because I needed to run this business. So I had a contradiction in my mind. Like this, I lost the baby. I lost the baby and it was horrible, you know. I was uh, exactly 40 years old. And uh, <laughs> can't you mind, 40 years old, I lost the baby. I said, I will never be able to, to have a child. And I went again and I, I prayed. I prayed to God to... Uh, to help me conceive. And uh, her answer was really, really uh, powerful, you know. Uh, it's done. And I asked, how can I give you thanks? And, uh, and she told me, you know, I'm the owner of everything. I'm, I, I own all the flowers. I own all the diamonds. I own everything. You, you just go your merry way. It's done. Within one month of that conversation, I was pregnant. And uh, needless to say, I was terrified to have a second miscarriage. And uh, I care very well of myself, and uh, uh, I gained lots of weight. <laughs> I was really, really huge and pregnant, and uh, I read so much. I read so much about pregnancy and birth, and uh, I became really wary about giving birth in hospitals. And I don't want to make people worry with that, you know. I, I think the best place for you to give birth is wherever you want to give birth. But I was wary of the hospital. And uh, I wanted to have an intimate birth, really intimate. Because, you know, you are, 
children, you're the most vulnerable and uh, you're naked and uh, to have doctors coming and going and students coming and going and nurses, uh, that for me felt horrible. And instead of being at home in your own pyjama, in your own bed, uh, with your husband, uh, that for me sounded terrific. And uh, I learned uh, uh, I learned a lot uh, about that. You know the, uh, how the brain develops in your womb, how you influence your baby, and the baby influences you. Uh, a heart relationship. Uh, it, it was really amazing how much I learned there. And uh, I was really ready and really confident that my birth, uh, my first birth, will happen tremendously well. And it did. It was terrific. Uh, six o'clock in the morning, I felt some uh, something, and I said, "Well, this she's coming." And uh, I started doing some kind of uh, a breathing techniques that I learned. I, I use a method called hypnobirthing, and uh, I. The way this method works is that you are really conscious and you really pay attention. You are really there. The metaphor, because the, this method offers you many methods, but the method that I use was to think myself as a flower opening up for my child to come to the world. And uh, I basically was blooming. Um, blooming. And uh, I was blooming for three hours. And uh, then we called the midwife, and uh, and the midwife arrived, and that's when I was losing it. This moment when uh, you have a birth, uh, that nothing is working, that you want to kill the doctor, <laughs> that you are in pain and uh, everything is just a disaster. At that moment, she arrived. And she was so perfect. She was just a perfect midwife for me. She was very patient, and she took the, a leadership stand, and she told me, "Calm down. You can do it. You have been doing perfectly for three hours. Everything is going to be fine." And she told me something very beautiful. I don't know if it's true, but it worked for me. She told me, "Your baby's head is really small. You're, he's going to be born really easily." And like all my power came back. I got myself into a, the bath because we had a birthing bath, and uh, um, uh, and all my power came back. All my power came back. Uh, I squat, and the baby came out. Uh, he was asleep. He was perfect. He was healthy, and I was uh, almost forty-one years old. Uh, uh, what was new to me is that uh, the the placenta needed to be born. With all the readings that I did, I didn't uh, really understand what it meant. That is like a second birth of a smaller part of yourself, which is a wonderful organ. This the placenta. This like is a a summary of a heart, of uh, of the lungs, of uh, all the digestive tract. It's just a magic organ. It's, uh, it gives everything to the child, and uh, and that was just slightly difficult for me. That was the most difficult part of that birth, to birth the placenta. So the uh, the midwife had to help me to birth the placenta, and that was the most difficult. You know, really, that was the most difficult. Um, also, with uh, my high education and all the things that I learned, the other thing that I didn't know is that uh, after you give birth, you bleed. Uh, so you bleed for, uh, a, I don't know, uh, I don't remember, like for a couple of weeks, I think. And I didn't know that. So I give you to do that piece of information because it's <laughs> things that they don't tell you. And, uh, or you don't ask because you don't even imagine. So it was really a fantastic birth, and I felt great afterwards. I started working just immediately, and I felt really full of testosterone and just full of energy, and my business grew that year tremendously. I was on asteroids working. I was 
really top of the line, working really hard, no postnatal depression, no, uh, you know, uh, I, I could say that I did have the baby blues the, during the first three months, uh, I was terrified, terrified, terrified that I could do something bad to my child, that he could fall me, uh, off my hands without uh, uh, me noticing because I, I'm, I'm so clumsy and I never dealt with a child. I was really scared of that. So uh, I can imagine that many women are scared of that because we want to get it right and uh, you love the child. So you get more terrified and more, you have more anxiety to get it right. So it was a great birth at 41. And, uh, uh, and then the baby became nine months and he uh, uh, started to uh, change from crawling to starting to walk. And uh, well, I must admit that after he was born, if, uh, seconds after he was born, I was saying, oh, I want the second child. <laughs> I was just ready for the second child immediately after he was born. But when he was nine months, uh, I was really ready. And uh, yes, I did it again. I, I, I went to God and I prayed for a second child. And uh, she again said the same, is done. And uh, that conception was amazing because that conception, I can, I can say when it was, to the date and the hour. Uh, my husband and I uh, went on holiday to Brazil and uh, we came back, we did the laundry, we cleaned the house, and we sat down and we felt in that moment of, I love you, I want to have a child with you, I also want to have a child with you, I want a child that is that comes to change the world, who comes to make a better place. You see, I want to cry because it's uh, the way that conception went. and. Um, it was um, a really a touching divine, that moment of conception. It's really like you realize what being human is, being divine. I didn't, you know, I told this story before, but uh, I didn't realize how, how emotional this was. Uh, I didn't think about getting some Kleenex for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm here. <laughs> uh, so that uh, that moment was really terrific, and I can tell you that it worked. You know, this girl is amazing. That uh, from that conception was born a girl, and uh, yesterday I was uh, here with her in front of my computer, and I was writing, and she took two hands and she was doing like this in my arm, just for fun, and I can tell you it was like a Reiki session. This girl is full of energy. It's a healing uh, uh, creature. So we knew that we were pregnant. We just got uh, the check after a month that uh, we really knew that we were pregnant. And uh, that pregnancy went in a different way. Easy and in a different way scary. After my son was born, uh, as I said, I was really excited on, on asteroids and really uh, full of energy. And that meant that I got really, really, really healthy. I started exercising, I started to eat well, so I was really thin, but really thin and strong, you know, very muscular and very, very healthy. And uh, so this pregnancy in some way was uh, an easier one. But the problem this time was that I was thinking, I have to get it right. The first delivery was perfect, I didn't have pain. Uh, it was a static, it really got me to my power, it, so I have to do it right. Uh, and I have to do it right, it was something like, uh, um, I have to prove myself to myself, I have to prove myself to the world, I have to do it right. So there was more pressure in the second pregnancy and delivery to get it right. And uh, yeah, the pregnancy went great. Uh, um, during uh, the pregnancy I was told that I had placenta previa and that possibly the, it needed to be a c-section and uh, of course I did it again, I went and prayed <laughs> and I said well whatever you give me the, the way you want my birthing 
experience to be, I accept it and I welcome it. And uh, God was quiet actually. She didn't say, uh, tell to me what was going to happen, but I felt that a natural birth was going to happen. Uh, because of course we wanted a, the natural birth at home. So we rented the uh, bathtub again, the, uh, the birthing tub uh, for the baby. And uh, it came the time for her to be born. And goodness, I had, I don't know how many really, I haven't counted them. Five or ten even, false alarms. <laughs> like for a month, I was having uh, uh, birth pains. And I will go and lie down and start doing my breathing and counting the contractions. And I will stop. And again, and again, and again, and we were getting really desperate. Uh, uh, and we were starting to think, well, this is going. Uh, the baby is going to go beyond the due date, and they are going to ask me to um, um, induce and say goodbye to the natural birth. So, with the placenta previa, with the uh, delay of uh, coming. This really challenged me thinking what is my expectation of what I want? Do I really want a natural birth? And the conclusion is I want a healthy child and I want a healthy self and I want the best experience possible to my child. But the priority is I want a healthy child. So I really, uh, I, I said, What's the best way to, that I can have that? Well, to calm down, to really calm down. So I, I started cooking, I started painting, and cooking, and painting, and painting, and more painting. I, I made so many uh, watercolors those days. And uh, <laughs> my son was born on a Sunday. And on the Saturday before, my husband made a very specific dinner lamb with uh, uh, potatoes, uh, uh, grat, uh, grat, uh, gratin potatoes with, uh, uh, um, now I don't remember the name of the vegetables, but uh, with some greens, very specific dinner for when he, the Saturday when he was born. Then he did exactly the same for the Saturday before she was born. But he was born in the morning, so from 6 to uh, 9, uh, 6 to 10, uh, we knew that he was going to be born that day. But uh, all morning went, all afternoon went, and she was not coming. <laughs> and we were all desperate. And uh, at 6 o'clock, she, uh, she said, I'm coming. And uh, the, then, then I really felt birth pains. And it was really like, uh, it was directly to the moment when you cannot cope anymore. Just from one t moment to the other, I was just in pure birth uh, 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 work. Uh, it was real labor. And it was so interesting because uh, <clears throat> I tried to apply the method of hypnobirthing. And uh, it, it was like uh, the pain will get me in the sorry, the sensation will get me into the pain. I will fall into the hurricane of the pain really quickly. And I will have the consciousness to say, I can get back into center. And I was able to do it. And then another one will come so fast that I will get into the pain again and then get back in the center. So it was challenging but possible for me to get into that center. Uh, it was very beautiful that my husband will touch my shoulder and that will get me out of my concentration. I will get angry. And then I told myself, how do you want to experience this birth? Angry at your husband or powerful? And I said, powerful and centered. So I said, for the next wave of contractions, no matter if he touches me or he doesn't touch me, I'm going to concentrate myself. And I was able to concentrate.
And it was amazing because it was a sleeping time, and I had a, a, a toddler at two years old. And uh, uh, my husband went and showered him, read him a bedtime story, put him in pyjama, put him into bed, and the child fell asleep. <laughs> and I was with birthing contractions in the room next door. So the child was born at age 15. And I think my husband went to the room at quarter to eight. <laughs> and I was feeling that I wanted to go to the toilet. I wanted to, uh, uh, number two. That's what I thought I was feeling because that's what my experience with my son. And I say, I think I had to think I need to stand up. I need to go to the toilet. And I touched myself and I touched the head of the girl. So we say, well, we don't have time to call the midwife. <laughs> we don't. We do have to get yourself into the bathtub. So I stand up. And I couldn't move anymore. And I stand up and I really couldn't move anymore. So my husband put yourself in his knees and he was ready to receive her. And I seriously, I didn't have to push. She just was born. She just flew in his arms. And uh, contrary to her brother who uh, didn't cry, she did cry. And uh, she was perfectly fine. Uh, uh, I grabbed her uh, close to my chest, and <laughs> my husband uh, was calling the midwife. And uh, so he was on the phone with the midwife. Mid midwife, come here! And, uh, I am uh, that person, or whatever. And the pains of the, uh, the birth in placenta were coming, and that's a kind of a comedy that. Uh, uh, I started to have the pain, but I was very tired. I just gave birth. So I was standing and sitting down, standing and sitting down <laughs> for the pains of the birthing placenta. And uh, I was holding the baby, of course. I couldn't just catch my placenta myself. Well, I guess possibly I could. But my husband with the telephone uh, in one hand, the placenta came out, and my husband caught it <laughs> in the air, the placenta. <laughs> Oh, it's really hilarious. It was like a, a comedy, and uh, and my my do my son was sleeping. It was amazing that uh, uh, that birth, and uh, so finally uh, we got the the midwife on the phone. Finally, she came in. She rang the doorbell, and that's when my son woke up. And uh, uh, so they. Uh, uh, I don't remember if they reviewed me first or they reviewed her uh, first, my daughter. But it was so sweet that uh, I was sitting on a towel on a, a, a sports ball, and uh, uh, and my son saw that I didn't have a pyjama, so immediately uh, went to find my my pyjama trousers, my son. <laughs> and uh, oh, I forgot that uh, that was so sweet at the beginning of the birth. When uh, I started to have the pain, my son brought some bananas to me <laughs> because then uh, he could. He thought like he could ease my pain with uh, the bananas. I was so beautiful, so unforgettable. And uh, and then when his sister was born, uh, he he went to clothe to clothe me. How uh, that that was a worry for me. How my son was going to experience the birth and the birth at home. He was just so perfect. He could understand things much better than us. Uh, I don't know if it was that same day, but it was less than a week that she was born. Uh, there was a moment we couldn't understand what she wanted. It's when you are getting to know your baby, so you don't know if it's diaper or too hot or too cold or milk or colic or uh, you don't know what it is. So our son was uh, woken up by her crying, and he went to our room, and he just looks what's going on, and he goes and takes a blanket and gives it to us. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> she was cold. And, uh, and now we really ask him, uh, we ask him, what does this person need? And he knows. He all knows all the time. He's four, and he hasn't lost it. So, uh, uh, so yeah, that, that second birth, uh, did not happen in the bathtub like we wanted. Uh, 
uh, we were not able to call the, mid call the midwife on time, so my husband has to meet the midwife. But it was perfect, and it was it was according to plan, because the plan was to have a healthy child, a healthy mother, and an intimate experience, and that we did have. So uh, I think. Uh, you know, the, 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 this just fits perfectly with yesterday to me. Yesterday, every single thing that I planned did not come true. But uh, I decided this year to plan my life according to how I would feel and not uh, what I will achieve. And that way life works. So it doesn't matter if I had ended up in the hospital, I was feeling uh, love in an intimate environment, in a healthy environment, protected, uh, loved. And that's what I wanted of my birth, uh, or of the birth of my daughter, uh, and the birth of my son, of course. So uh, this is what is very important in your birth plans. And it's, it's, not, it's somehow that's something that you can write in your birth plan, but it's something that you have to have very clear. Uh, what is a priority? Your safety, your being loved, your being calm, your being peaceful. Uh, that is the priority. And um, not having to perform, not having to, uh, not even having to be afraid, you know, because there is no reason for fear. So many babies have been born in so many years. Je yesterday I heard a beautiful story that uh, really inspired me. My husband is uh, reading a book of uh, finances, uh, the latest book of Tony Robbins. And this man uh, who tells his story, his birth story, a very old man tells his birth story in that book, he says that uh, he had a very difficult birth and uh, the doctor told his father, you have to decide of your uh, wife or the, your son. And he said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I cannot decide that, I want them both. And, uh, <laughs> and the, the doctor said, well, you know, uh, it has to be a cesarean. And uh, this is the only thing I know of a cesarean, a patient, a health in a book. And the father says, you know enough, you can do it. <laughs> Um, both were safe, the father and the son. And that was the first cesarean that happened in that hospital after 30 years. <laughs> and the man now, I don't know, he's in his 60s or 70s. And uh, uh, for me it's very inspiring not to settle for what you are being told, but really say what you want. Because you really, you can get it. You can really get what you want, including in the world of birth. So, so that's a, those are my two stories of birth. Uh, maybe you want me to clarify something or to say something uh, more on a uh, part that I forgot. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you so much, Blanca. It was really emotional for me as well. And um, I took some notes, you know, because you said so many life-changing words, I think. Um, I'd love to ask you, for your experience, uh, if you think about both your births, I mean, let's think about the birth experience. What does this event in your life holds that changed you in a way or another, that gave you that um, inspiration and that strength to, to become a new woman from the one you were before the conception, because it was a long journey, a transformational journey. So if you, if you look back to the Blanca you were five, six years ago, and then you look at yourself today, which is that uh, special thing that you found in childbirth 
that gave you the strength and yes, the inspiration to be a new, to be a new version of yourself. I think it's love, love, and, and love, uh, not in this cheesy Saint Valentine way, you know. <laughs> uh, love in the most profound and divine version of that. You know, my family, all, all of them, the three of them, have been ill like for a month. Uh, uh, they just changed. Huh? <laughs> now she's still, she's still uh, a cold, not very uh, dangerous stuff, but still disruptive. And uh, I had to uh, uh, do uh, chicken soup and uh, uh, take care and stay in the night, etc. And uh, my husband told me, Am I not dragging you down? Are you, you know, slower in your business because of this? And uh, I think, wow, no. When I think about it, how my life was, and it was, it was white, you know. I had, I had these white apartments, clean, immaculate, clean, white couch, everything clean. And now, of course, we have chocolate uh, uh, on the couch and chocolate on the table and. This white life and this kind of perfect life, this is so sterile. And now, after the children have been born, it's like a, like fertility has come in all different ways. Now, come up uh, with ideas for projects, with ideas for cooking, with ideas for parties. With, it, it is like a, I can do so many things, but they are not so many trivial things. They are things that are important that they're full of heart, that are full of love. Uh, it's like my entire life has changed. I was, uh, 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 I thought of a really cool metaphor the, of uh, uh, what has happened. Is uh, uh, the, uh, In December it was the Christmas party at, at the school of my son. And uh, all mothers, we were allowed to take something for that Christmas party and I chose to take a cake. That. And I'm thinking, oh my God, they are four years old, uh, and they can to cut their cake. If I take a cake, somebody has to take care of the knife. Maybe I should take cake pops. So then I went and investigated how to do cake pops, and I don't know if you or your audience know what to do, a, how to do a cake pop. A cake pop is a combination between cake and cream, and then you mash it together. You make some little balls, and you put a, a uh, um, I call it a, a stick like a lolly, and then you cover it with liquid chocolate, and then you put sprinkles on top, and then you leave it in the uh, in the fridge. Can you imagine how many hours is that? That's what I wanted to do. And then I thought, do I really need to do that? No. Do I know how to do it? No. How much time will it? No. Do I want to go and take an off-the-shelf cake that uh, has no personality? No. So I have to find my middle ground. And I came up with a cake that was very difficult to do for me, but it was not the pop cakes. So uh, <clears throat> this story of the cake is my metaphor of what motherhood means to me. You have to find your middle ground of what is the, the dream of what motherhood means to you and the, let's say, despicable other extreme of what motherhood means to you and reach a middle ground of what is possible and it still will make you happy. And that is something that childbirth has given me that has made me really powerful but very real. This is my limit. Not I cannot reach something else. Like I couldn't reach the bathtub with my daughter, <laughs> and it was just her destiny. We couldn't call the midwife. It, it was just her destiny. It's her father had to uh, catch her. <laughs> so this I don't know. Maybe the word is temperance. To see where is your power, how powerful you can be, but what's your limit? Because there is a limit. And also, um, when you said that in your second pregnancy and then childbirth, 
you um, you did want everything to be the right way, and then it went the right way, even if it went differently from what you maybe you thought about. So these words that you just said to me about temperance and find your limit, um, how could you accept during childbirth that you had a limit and that only through accepting it you could give birth to your daughter? Only through accepting that things can go maybe differently from the way you plan, but they can still be fine. So how can you accept this and, yes, how did you do it? How did you deal with it? Because you were in the middle of the childbirth pain and, you know, you don't have a lot of time to think. You just have to, to act and concentrate on breathing and on what you are doing, pushing or letting go, whatever it is. So how did you cope with it? How did you accept your limits during childbirth? Well, uh, I guess childbirth starts from the moment of conception. <laughs> this starts a, a, a it's a long journey, and uh, thanks God, is that like that that uh, you have nine months to get used to the idea that you will go through that transformation. So um, I really recommend to uh, to women that they work with people like you. <laughs> to have serious conversations about serious issues. For me, my support was my, my books. I didn't have the blessing of a doula, and uh, now I think I, I wish I had. I really wish I had. I, uh, I didn't realize how important it could have been for me. Um, um, uh, what helped me were, were my books. What helped me were books written by women who are midwives or doulas to see that. There was a very beautiful story uh, written by uh, Mary Mongan, the author of the hypnobirthing method, on uh, how we condition our mind to, uh, to please our family. So if your mother had horrible childbirth and your grandmother had horrible childbirth and your sister also had horrible childbirth, it, it creates like a, a family competition to tell the most horrible childbirth story. And uh, you are not allowed to have a beautiful childbirth story because then you are not part of the family anymore. And uh, of course, my mother did have a horrible childbirth of me. <laughs> And uh, I said to myself, no, I want to live my own story. So I, I was determined to live my own story. And I was also determined to live my own story, whatever it will be. Whatever it will be. So, but this surrender, you really have to surrender to, to the divine. So... It, it, I mentioned it several times in my uh, in my story that uh, I had to call to God in the most important moments uh, of these changes, and I was praying all the all the both uh, pregnancies. I was praying all the time, and that made me feel really truly protected. Uh, so. Uh, if, now as, uh, to your audience, if you don't have a belief in something bigger than yourself, being a mother will give it to you. Because give a mo being a mother is just something beyond magical, is something beyond scientific. Uh, science hasn't been able to create life. Uh, if you surrender into divine protection, then you're protected. And then you can let go of control. In fact, you know, um, I even, I, I'm really a control freak, actually. <laughs> so it's a really good question for me. I wrote a huge two Excel files <laughs> for my son and for my daughter, taking care of everything, you know, what should be in the room, and uh, if this scenario happens, this is this scenario happens, that. And I came up with a horrible scenario, you know, for the birth of my daughter, 
what if uh, they discover that we need to go to the hospital after she has been born? Uh, who is going to take care of her? Who is going to take care of my son? And who is going to be with me? My husband cannot be with the three of us. And my husband is just great, you know. <laughs> the most tropical uh, Dutch man in the world. He tells me, look, this scenario is not going to happen to start with. And if it happens, I will know what to do with it. Uh, so, uh, so my recommendation is sure, uh, rely on God, sure do your Excel file, but also be practical and uh, rely on your husband. And uh, if you don't have a husband, which is uh, uh, quite possible, uh, have somebody who is very serious and very strong close to you. Uh, a good friend, uh, a good neighbor, a uh, good member of the family, but you have you need a, a level-headed person who you can give your wishes because uh, God forbid that uh, it's a matter of life and death. Uh, if something really goes wrong, somebody needs to know what you want. So be practical in that sense that uh, uh, you do have your wishes expressed uh, to, uh, to, a mem to, uh, to a person who knows who could carry that. Th that allowed me to to surrender as well, you know. <laughs> You've been very practical. <laughs> so I hope I answer your question because I uh, I get too enthusiastic sometimes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I want to say a few words about the things to, you know, find the right person close to you. Um, if you choose to have a doula by your side. A doula is different from a family member, from a friend, from a um, medical professional. She is especially for you to assist you, um, to give you information, to give you emotional and physical support. So that may be the right person actually you, you need. Because you know, when you ask someone who is very close to you, um, a friend or a family member, that person um, is different from a professional, so he or she will always bring her own um, experience into what she's living with you, into your pregnancy and childbirth, while a doula is able to be neutral. And this is a great help, you know, because um, when you are pregnant and when you are giving birth, Often it happens that people around you are telling you what you have to do and which is the right way to do something or which is the other right way to do it. But you need to find your own way, as you said, and Adula can help you to, to do it. So I just want to say those words. And I got one last question for you, Blanca. As you went through now the tale of your both childbirths. How do you feel now? How does this time together today make you feel now? How do you feel now? You know, uh, I feel delirious. I feel exhilarated about life. Um, I didn't tell the story that after my daughter was born two months afterwards, she had to be hospitalized because uh, uh, of uh, uh, like a, uh, a breathing system uh, virus. And uh, I was scared for her life for two years, really. Even if she was not in danger, but I was scared. And I think it's very important, the work of, uh, of Adula, of uh, of the medical profession in general uh, after birth, during uh, and after birth, because the angst of the women need to be uh, uh, addressed. She shouldn't be left alone. And I, I was left alone and I didn't know how to ask for help. And that's also why I'm here to uh, with you to tell people that uh, the work that uh, uh, you and your colleagues do is very important and they shouldn't be suffering like me 
uh, feeling bad with uh, I'm not asking for help. If you feel any in any way bad in any way uh, that you need help, is really the best way to ask somebody who is not of your family and who's professional and not biased to help you. And I finally, after two years, after now my daughter is running and talking, and uh, I feel safe to to go and tell uh, this story. And I feel safe to have, for the first time, my birthday celebration. It's the first time I'm going to invite friends for a birthday after I became a mother. Uh, so uh, I feel really blessed. And I'm very grateful to you to, uh, to help me to, uh, as you said, that just by telling the story, just storytelling is healing. It, he it heals me. And uh, I hope I am paying it forward for all, to all the women who are listening to this so that they learn from me and they don't have to suffer either the things that I suffer or on the contrary, that they get inspired to have a, a positive birth like the ones I had because in fact they were great. So, uh, so I'm very grateful to you and uh, and I am I'm very, very loving to all the women, to all the women, you know, to all the women, the women who haven't been able to conceive, the women who are pregnant right now, the women who are mothers and are just remembering stuff. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's such a blessing to be a mother. I'm, I'm delirious for this change in life. Thank you, Blanca. You know what's interesting to me, that something that you said, that you understand uh, the value of a doula when you gave birth, after you gave birth. You can understand that, you know, it can really, really help you during pregnancy and childbirth and during the postpartum period, only when you already went through all the process because you know what you need. So maybe it's more difficult for first-time mothers to understand um, the great support they can get from a doula. And maybe it is more, it is easier to understand it when you are a second or last-time mother. You know what I, uh, I found really challenging, uh, uh, and it's exactly the, the women I work with, is that highly educated women have a very hard time asking for help. And uh, I suffer of that. I, uh, I had the fortune of misfortune to, of uh, going to uh, many schools and universities and that they empowered me in the masculine way, you know. I can do it. And yeah, sure, I can do many masculine things. I'm, I'm, I'm very driven. I'm, uh, I'm a highly ambitious woman. But all the subject of pregnancy, birth, conception, postpartum, that is feminine and that is not achievement, that is not trying hard, that is really the contrary, is letting go, being able to ask for help, uh, being able to ask for help is huge. So if our women learn to uh, ask for help, the health of humanity will increase. And uh, I uh, I now understand better what I needed now afterwards. So if I had a third child that I don't think is going to happen, I think where our family is complete, I will definitely have a doula. And uh, yeah, as I said before, I really recommend it, especially for for our tough cookies, for the women who think that uh, I know that they can uh, climb mountains. Uh, this is a different. Uh, uh, how to call it? A uh, different ground, uh, a different ball game. It, it, it's not a game. It's really a, a complete different circumstance where we women have lots memory of. And uh, and if you get assistance, you will get much more gifts than otherwise. Yes. Thank you so much, Blanca. So, 
Well, I think we we are coming to an end. What do you think? Do you feel like sharing anything else? Yeah, the, I think the, the last bit that uh, uh, I mentioned that was important for me to, to tell people and uh, um, and I wish you all the best for all these pregnant women at the uh, I wish you all the best. I wish you to have the best, best birth. And uh, you know, there is something a friend of mine told me. It's so beautiful. It's not just your uh, labor or your uh, delivery moment. It's the birth of your child. Think about him. Connect to him, because your child tells you what he or she wants. Is his beginning. It's not your delivery day. It's his birth. And uh, I don't know, that liberates me. That gives me some, some freedom and some more loving. Thank you, Blanc. Thank you for being, uh, for showing your vulnerability and your strength at the same time today. I love you for this. I like you so much. So, uh, you know, there's. Just something else I want to say to our audience. Um, if you are a mother and you have already given birth and you had um, an amazing childbirth story, I'd love to hold a sacred space for you um, as I just done it here today with Blanca. So if you feel like sharing your story, and if you feel that you need a healing through the telling of your story, please contact me and send me a short message. Um, my email address is pregnancysqueen at hotmail.com or you can simply go to my website www.pregnancysqueen.com and you drop me a message. So I want to thank you, Blanca, again. I wish you a wonderful motherhood with your family and kids. And I say goodbye to you all and thank you for watching. Magic blessings to everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.